So the story about how I got my Stripe internship started in the middle of the summer of 2021 at a two hour virtual career fair called the Greylock Tech Fair. And in case you're not familiar, Greylock is a venture capital firm. So this career fair consisted of the many big name startups that they invested in like Robinhood, Figma, Databricks, Plaid, Aurora, Nero, and of course Stripe, among many others. So when I was there, I split my time between Figma, Robinhood, and Stripe because these were the three products that I actually used. And for everyone else that I liked, I just briefly stopped by to use their check-in link and drop off my resume. So when I got to Stripe's booth, which had two engineers and one recruiter, I was like, hey, I know that guy because he was my math coach in middle school. And we already happened to be friends on Facebook, actually. So then immediately after the career fair ended, I hopped into Messenger and I was like, hey, I got a lot of questions. Can I ask you some of them? And he was nice enough to not only respond, but also answer basically all my career related questions for the whole year. And that's how everything started. So then in mid-August, I applied to Stripe and I didn't ask for a referral because I felt kind of bad about doing that. But in retrospect, I needed one because I was getting ghosted for a month. I was kind of surprised because I thought I had a pretty good resume. I had um, a Facebook internship and two TA positions, and those gave me interviews with plenty of other companies, but I guess, I don't know, maybe I just applied a little bit too late. So initially I didn't feel too stressed about Facebook's return offer expiring before I finished um, Stripe's process because I was actually planning to work at Stripe during the winter slash spring semester. But then I realized that they might run out of spots. So then I immediately tried to do something about it. So yeah, in early September, I decided to ask him how I should follow up. And he actually offered to bump a recruiter for me. And bam, that's how I got the hacker rank the next day. All right, so this hacker rank, along with most of the questions I got during my interviews, were essentially all the same flavor. So those who know me know that one of my biggest pet peeves is that lead code questions often have nothing to do with what you actually do on the job. But fortunately, Stripe's process has very, very little emphasis on algorithms. And for the most part, you're actually solving like practical problems. And a lot of people might say that Stripe's process is a little bit too easy, but that's what they tell you upfront. Because before my first interview, they straight up told me the goal is for the problem to be relatively simple and you'll be evaluated on how correct and readable your code is. And also you're not expected to know anything beyond like um, arrays, maps, strings, and integers, which are the very first things you learn in computer science. So honestly, the questions were easy, but that doesn't mean the interviews are easy because for a lot of people, good coding habits are pretty hard to build up. So for example, if you were to do some last second prep by reading up on good style the night before, that might not actually be enough for you to be able to execute that the next day. And also some problems have a lot of context that you need to ingest. So at times it feels a little bit like a reading comprehension exam, which at least I think is always pretty hard. Uh, yeah, anyways, back to the hacker rank. So the question I got was exactly like what I described earlier. So, you know, simple, but pretty practical. And something that surprised me was that there was a free response section at the end of it, which I hadn't seen anywhere else. But I actually tried pretty hard on that because I learned from Greylock that they care a lot about writing, documentation, and stuff like that. So I wanted to show that I was like a good culture fit. All right, so because I was super busy in September, I took a while to finish this hacker rank, but then they invited me to the technical interview just three days after that. And I did those at the end of September. During that interview, I was given, I would say like something on the easy side of a lead code medium. But then again, I don't think lead code is a good proxy for any of the questions I got because none of them required me to know like any particular algorithms. So the main difference between this question and the one I got on Hacker Inc was that there was a human interviewer and a human interviewer means lots of follow-ups. And by lots of follow-ups, I mean that there was a lot of different modifications I had to make, which consequently means a lot of refactoring. And this is probably the main thing that tells them whether or not you can write clean and concise code and therefore whether or not you'd be a good fit at Stripe. Because if your code's already maintainable in the first place, then refactoring shouldn't be that hard, right? Another thing worth mentioning is that Stripe really cares about whether or not you know a language really well. So in most technical interviews with I think the only exception being knowing C++ for some trading firms. These companies genuinely don't care about what language you use, right? Because problem solving skills can be evaluated with just pseudocode. However, Stripe actually requires you to tell them what language you use ahead of time. And I learned during my internship that it's because they train interviewers in a certain language so that they can interview people in that language and look out for certain things. The mentor I talked about earlier, who's actually a staff engineer at Stripe, he told me that the most important thing is to write idiomatic code. So like if you're coding in Python, which is what I did, 
you should definitely use things like list comprehension, default dicks, destructuring, f-strings, etc, etc. Because these are the kinds of tricks that show that you have a really solid understanding of your strongest language. So now let's talk about the final interviews. So these interviews consist of three parts. The first one is basically the same as the technical interview I described earlier. And then there's the exciting part called the integration problem. The first thing they ask you to do is actually to download a GitHub repository with a small code base in it. But for this to work smoothly, you need to follow a set of instructions that they sent to you beforehand so that you can tweak some things in your local environment. So the interview starts with you basically reading some documentation, um, understanding the task that you're given, uh, maybe skimming the code and stuff like that, just to see how everything works. Since it's open book, open internet, you know, you're free to use Google and Stack Overflow as much as you want. But if you're not already familiar with the concepts of like REST APIs, then you're gonna have a pretty rough time during this interview. All right, so if you pass these two rounds, then you'll get the final hiring manager interview. And I remember this one just being like a standard behavioral interview. So if you're good at communicating the past lessons you learned or like showing enthusiasm for the company, and stuff like that, this will probably be a piece of cake. Maybe you can read up on Stripe's operating principles, but I don't think it'll be that useful. So yeah, that's the whole process. And three days after I finished that last step, my recruiter reached out to schedule a call, and that's when I found out that I got the offer. So I wanna close this video out by sharing some advice that I didn't get to talk about earlier. The first thing is do not procrastinate. And I'm the last person that should be saying this, but seriously, apply early, and if you get that next step, do it ASAP. I took way too long to do my hacker rink, and then I got an email saying that spots for the winter cohort ran out. And then when I got the offer, they actually told me that I only had a few hours to decide if I wanted to join in the winter because of some headcount deadline that they had. Also, when Stripe runs out of spots, they actually waitlist people. And a few people I know got waitlisted as early as late October. So yeah, do everything early and as soon as possible. So now for some more practical advice, the two lead code categories that I found the most helpful for practical problems were first, design where you have to implement some API, and secondly, simulation where you have to implement some like real world thing. And the last piece of advice I'll share is don't underestimate the value of communication. So Stripe was actually one of the two companies to give me feedback after my process. And my recruiter told me that one of the main things that helped me stand out was my communication. And since they really value things like good writing, good documentation, they saw that skill of mine making me a good culture fit. And just so anything I say doesn't come off the wrong way, I'm not implying that getting a Stripe offer necessarily means that you're gonna be a great engineer. But I'm glad that throughout the process, they're constantly looking for the little things that matter much more on the job. And if more companies start realizing that this is good and they start doing this, then maybe I'll never have to grind the code ever again. Hope you found this helpful. I'll see you next time. Peace.